Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, the third in our collecting customer payments using digital conversation series. And we've already covered the channels and blending AI chatbots and live agents in our first and second webinars. So today we're going to take a look at the whole area of process automation and how automating key processes not only ensures that customers stay engaged and continue the conversation, but it also enables the business to actively reduce labor intensive and inefficient activities. So whether that's sending a pay payment links during live conversations to, ca to capturing essential data using customer conversational forms, um, that's what we're going to cover in more detail today. For those of you who are joining us for the first time today and didn't manage to attend the first and second webinars, don't worry, um, we can forward you the on-demand links so you can view it at your own leisure. I've actually had a couple of requests already and um, have fulfilled those requests, but again, don't worry, you can watch them at your own pace. Um, so before we get started, I'll just quickly, quickly run through some house rules. Um, to ask questions, simply use your question button on the control panel on your screen. As always, we would encourage you to ask questions during the session, but also feel free to contact us afterwards um, and we'd be quite happy to answer your questions. We have had a lot of follow-up questions after some of the webinars we've done um, during this series. So now let's crack on. Um, those of you who have been on before will have heard and listened to Mark and Opperman and Graeme Bragg from Webio here, who are our conversational messaging gurus. Um, they've been implementing customer communications for many, many years, um, more than we would care to remember, and have um, achieved some really great results in some of our clients. So um, how are you, uh, Graeme and Mark? Hi, I'm Marie. I'm very well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Hi, uh, Anne-Marie, um, and thanks uh, for the intro there. Um, Graham, we have been upgraded to conversational gurus. So, um, Anne-Marie, that extra tenor is in the post to you straight away. So, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to look up the word guru first, though, Mark. That's all right. I'm not quite sure. There's probably more than one meaning. <laughs> there probably is. So, yeah, there's, uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping it's good. So, um, as Anne-Marie said, uh, we're going to look at the whole area of automation within debt collection um, because really it's a case of where you know there is huge efficiencies that can be gained um, and uh, you know we're going to do a, a deeper dive uh, uh, to that today so let's just look at and uh, I'm probably covering a bit of uh, old ground it is important to really just set the scene um, that we do today, we work with a lot of different companies, almost exclusively in the credit and collections world. Um, and if I was to break it down, everything from the uh, retail environment, uh, and if I was to pick a, a, a name there, you'll see on the top left-hand corner, um, the very group. Most people would know them as Shop Direct, but they've actually just um, rebranded very recently. Um, so they'll now be known as the Very Group. Um, so from a retail to financial services, the likes of your hoist or funding circle, to your utilities, the likes of, say, uh, Angley and Water. And again, uh, there's quite a, a number of companies there. Some you'll know, some you won't know. But really, um, you know, great um, that we have um, all these different uh, companies, some of the really good stuff that we have done with them, um, and really where the innovation that we've delivered, where it has been market leading when compared to other stuff that they were doing. We have got um, and won a number of awards over the past um, 24, 36 months, which we are absolutely delighted about. So great to have you know lots of customers and doing some good stuff with them, but even better to get recognized um, in the credit and collection uh, industry. So enough of that, let's move on to the, the, the meat of the conversation today. And that's where, um, Graham, I would ask you to um, take over uh, from here and bring us uh, through um, the um, automation, automating conversations. Thank you very much, Mark. Hello, everybody. Yes, I mean, obviously, the, the goal really of uh, today's webinar is to cover off at a fairly high level um, how automation of conversations using bots and also bringing humans in when needed can make a huge difference to your business, both in time saving, in cost saving, and also actually in the way that your customers perceive and work with your business. I'll run through a few bullets with you here. So the first thing really is, you know, tailored bots that take care of repetitive and resource hungry tasks. I don't like to read bullets, but that sort of puts it in a nutshell. The graphic on the side sort of shows that, you know, it's, there's a lot of things that we do every day and many of them 
are really straightforward. What a lot of people call the heavy lifting stuff, the repetitive stuff, where basically it's you know, every time I have a phone call, I have to identify who you are before I can give you some data. Well, that generally is going to happen on 70, 80, 90 percent of calls. So quite a repetitive task. Other things, you know, if most of your uh, conversations end up with you taking a payment, or they end up with you maybe giving a refund or a different product or an answer to a question. You know, it's the old Pareto rule always really where you find that the same questions get asked over and over and over again. And it's just not a good use of human resource really to actually have a human being do that every time. And the whole sort of process of passing somebody to a website, oh, well, here's the answers, they're on the website, look them up here. It's not a great experience for the customer. So the way we look at this is actually let the customer ask the question, let the system understand the question and let it respond to them the best way for them. So as if a human was doing it, often, you know, you're going to generally, in fact, you're going to tell them it is a, a bot that's responding and let them know that. But actually, they're getting the same sort of response in the same sort of way as if they'd asked you a human being. So tailoring things is quite key. And when I say tailored, it's not about trying to create also a huge bot that is going to do everything. Um, Interesting, I think I mentioned it in a couple of other webinars, but I sit around tables quite often and ask people questions of what they believe a bot is. And it varies from something that is simply just a, a tree branch. They said yes, they said no, do this, do that, which in fact isn't really artificial intelligence. It's a very simple process. To those that think it's a, a huge green monster that's going to take over the business, it's going to do everything, it's going to take all of our jobs. But that's not the case. The way to look at this is to have bots that do specific tasks and they get very, very good at those tasks and can do them smoothly, quickly, and then hand over as required. This is where the next bullet comes in really. It's in harmony with human agents because a bot isn't always gonna understand what somebody says. And that's the key part of this as well. You know, get a bot very good at what it does, but actually if someone does want to break out of that very quickly, let them do so let it go to a human. If they suddenly, you know, ask a question that isn't one of the sort of 80, 20 rule ones, you know, something that isn't asked that regularly, again, you don't just want to say to them, sorry, I don't understand that. It's a really bad experience. The whole thing here is push it to the human, send it to the, to the human to answer the question. And of course, then that can be then recorded back into the bot. And if that gets asked again, it's there and it will learn and get smarter and smarter. And that's when you build up these tailored bots to do most of the sort of, as I say, repetitive and heavy lifting tasks. The next part is, you know, it does improve the customer experience. A lot of people do want self-service. They want to be able to ask a question and get an answer. They don't want to have to, you know, make a phone call based on a text they sent that says, now ring this number. They don't want to do that. They want to, they've got a question. They want to ask it. They don't particularly want to speak to somebody, you know. So that self-service piece really does improve the customer experience. When that's what they want, often that isn't what they want, though. If it's a complaint, let's say, most of the time, people want to speak to a human. A bot isn't good enough. So a bot being able to understand that and switch it across is really key. Because customer experience is number one. The better the experience, the more you're going to get to the metrics that you're looking for at the end of it. The last one on this slide here is it's pretty obvious. And when you start to hand over tasks to these bots, you really are saving a lot of time for your human agents, really. Um, I've got a few stats that I'll go through as we move through. But the goal here really is within a few months of, of, of working and building bots to replace those basic tasks, and again, we'll cover those in a moment, you should look quite quickly to save 40% of a human agent's time. Now, that could be anything from end-to-end -end conversation to just dipping in and out of certain parts of a conversation. Now, I'm going to focus that on the demonstration that I do here. I'm going to have a bot that opens a conversation. We're then going to hand it over to a human that actually then goes back to a heavy lifting task, such as income and expenditure. But let the bot do that. And when it's completed, back to the human again to make the decision. So it's really about you know saving time in the right place and letting the agents do what they're really good at and let the bots do what they're really good at. Next part really is, is what do you do? What do you get the bots to do for you? Well, it will vary um, between companies um, and, and especially different verticals, but in the collections market where most of the people on the call today are, um, you know, you find there are a few areas really. I mean, I love that graphic at the end. You know, that's what generally happens when you start to meet companies. What, 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 what would you like to focus on? And you get five answers. Then the next person comes in the room for a different department that has five other answers. That, and they add up and they add up. And in the end, basically, they, they want to do everything. And that's just not the way to do this. You know, humans can have these conversations very quickly. 
but look at and focus on those things that are taking the most amount of time that are the easiest to fix in the first place. And then you expand on that as you go through. It's a very simple process, but it's something that most people don't do. So in the collections area, there are three things we've learned uh, over the last sort of couple of years are probably the biggest win areas. They're not the same for everybody, but they are in general, the three we would say you want to focus on. So in most sort of collections businesses, finance businesses, you see the top line there, just by focusing on those three things, about 80% of the painful conversations and painful time consuming stuff will disappear. The other the other 20% could be a million different things. So why focus on them? You know, start to break them down as phase two, phase three, and so forth. So you can see very quickly there are three points. Income and expenditure, we'll know uh, today, that's generally done over the phone. It's a 30 minute to 40 minute phone call. Often the customer doesn't have the answers to the questions, so they've got to come back or they've got to go away, look something up and come back to you, or they guess, and the data that you're getting isn't that great. So being able to do this with a bot that can wait all day for the answers, but can nudge them and chase them and help them with, with, with suggestions is a great way to do that. So that sort of 30, 40 minute call can be cut down to, from an agent's perspective, about five minutes. That's sending it, getting it back, understanding it. You know, they're not asking all those questions individually. The next one, collections of payments. Uh, a very simple piece, but again, you know, you've got a link to the payment provider that you use. Their cards have got to be stored. It's got to be PCI compliant. You know, all those little bits and pieces in there. Um, so you have to hide a lot of things and you know, agents can't access this, but they can do that. It goes to a third party system and so forth. Be able to do that in conversation, just sort of click of a button. Again, a real quick win for, for, for most companies. The next one, already mentioned it really in the first piece, identification and verification. It's something that when you're talking to somebody about personal information and their money and so forth, you have to do every time. You've got to check it's them. Someone else may have picked the phone up. Uh, somebody else may have you know, responded to a message. Somebody else may have come in as somebody else. Again, it's compliance. So you have to do that. And a bot can do that really easily. It's a really simple two or three stage process. You know, what's your date of birth? Someone responds to the date of birth. It checks back against the database. It matches. It doesn't match. Thank you very much. That matches. Can you now please give me your postcode or whatever it is that you use? So a bot can do that. And at the point it's got through, can then move on to the next stage, whether that's to a human now or whether that's a bot continuing down the conversation. So just those three things alone make a huge difference. Graeme, just on that point, um, the, a lot of our clients, um, and I know that you, you see this as well, just about that automation. There's structured elements to the conversations that happen every day, a bit like you've just mentioned there, the identification and verification. Um, and those are, without actually that much heavy lifting on our part, a lot of those we've seen them being automated very easily. So um, it would be fair to say most people think this whole automation is terribly complex and terribly, oh gosh, it's going to take so much resource. It actually is quite the uh, the opposite. So most people don't realize how quickly they can automate a good chunk of their journey. Um, we're seeing this over and over and actually more times than not, I think uh, you've had it in, on many, many occasions where people, um, the feedback is, gosh, we thought that was going to be a lot more difficult. And um, in a very short space of time, um, they're surprised how much they actually can uh, move down the, the the road of automation. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. And it, it's it's amazing. And this is where I say, you know, focus bots to do specific jobs, because that's what makes it quick and easy to deliver. Because you know, a, a, an ID and V is not that complex. It's basically asking a couple of questions or three questions and matching that to something else. Really simple. If you include that in a huge conversation that's trying to do a million different things, that's when it starts to get complicated. Something falls down, something goes wrong. You know, that's not the way to do it. So, you know, people say bots. I like I like the word botlets. Lots of little botlets that work together. They're each very good at their job. I've got a good receptionist. When the receptionist knows what you're asking, she gives it to the person that's an expert in that job. That's another little botlet, another person that does that. And that's the way I view this. It's interesting because we talk about you know those three things to focus on. But actually, let's go flip back the slide there. But we, we're working with a new client and they had a completely different uh, requirement, although they are a collections business. Um, so I was talking to him about your know, sort of thing. Oh, what do you do with other clients? Blah, blah, blah. blah. And we was talking about, you know, look, we, we do income and expenditures. It's a, it's a big win for companies. We do that through uh, a sort of a conversational form that's linked to the conversation. And, and, and all these things sort of were great, but they weren't quite what he wanted. And he said to me, well, look, we actually have people on the on the road. So every agent gets so many calls per day etc 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 and the biggest issue is we get there they're not in uh you know 
we probably could resolve a lot of these if we were to ring them first or whatever. He said, you know, we didn't ring them the day before. That's why we're going out, but they weren't there. And of course, you know, you're ringing someone, they don't pick it up. They do pick it up. They're available. They're not available. With digital messaging, it's different. So we looked at the whole journey and we came up with a real sort of simple structure of literally just four bots. The first bot, it goes out to all of the customers that are going to be visited that day, first thing in the morning, and says, look, we're here. We're going to be visiting you today. Um, are you going to be in, or would you like to try and resolve it now uh, before I – people don't always want – they don't want to visit, you know. So it's 50% of people. It's not quite there yet. We, we're looking at wording. It's only been live for a few weeks. Um, are basically coming back and saying – you know, actually, I'd like to resolve it. Can can I do that now? So, of course, the bot is picking it up. It's triaging it out. So if they're saying that, it's going off to somebody in the call center that's then having a conversation, resolves the issue, sorted. It comes off the list that the visit, the guy has to visit, so or the lady has to visit. So it's a really good win there, really simple. But then when they do get there, the biggest thing they have to do is to generally look at changing people's plans. Their, you know, their income and expenditures change, their situations change, all those sort of things. And so, yeah. We've got this income expenditure. That actually, they can send to the customer while they're sat with them, or they can work through on the system, and it all comes back into the same conversation, links back into who they are, into the, and just those two or three things alone have, have saved them infinite amounts of, of time. And each of the agents can already get through at least two, two and a half times as many calls scheduled as they were going to do beforehand. So there's some huge wins there. It uses some of the basics, but in a slightly different way. This is an interesting one, and everyone will have some interesting bits, and yeah, it's moving and learning all the time. So back to where I was. Sorry, I, I sort of diversified a little bit there. But um, another key part of this is, is to actually start off with those basics, but watch it, analyze it, and learn it but also don't say try and reinvent the wheel a lot of people think oh new technology we can do it in a different way actually no sometimes that's a good thing we will advise that if we know that but often it's about automating certain tasks and processes and then iterating them to be able to change them slightly once you've used them and started to learn from them so the first thing i say is look to, you know really to automate the current processes that you have uh, those painful ones whether it's those three we've already mentioned whether it's others let's look at that the next one is start to learn from other clients and users. And you know, we've got a number of customers in different verticals. You saw the logos there, so that's just a few of them. Uh, so we've got utilities, we've got collections, we've got finance, we've got retail, all those things. So wherever you sit, there are some things we will know are generally the best win areas for that vertical, that department, horizontal, whatever. So again, those discussions are really quite important and quite key. Also having live customer and agent feedback, having a process in place to do that is really important because you know, it might be a great process, but if the agents are finding it painful and they've got to click three things, when actually one click would be better, you know, you've got to understand that and learn that. So having a process in place, and again, we, we help with all of that sort of thing and the system does all that virus reporting tools. Dashboards reporting, that's sort of carrying on from there. Live, live views and historic views. What happened over the week? What's happening now? How many agents are involved? How many things are coming through? What are the statuses of those? Are they outstanding? Are we waiting for so many people to respond with a, a live um, income and expenditure? Did a lot of people cut off when it got to the second part of IDMV? All things you can watch and learn from to change the process to get further on and again, get to the metrics that you're looking for. AB version testing. The good thing about a real good SaaS software solution is that you can do things on the fly and change them quickly and try things out and revert back very quickly. A, B test, tried that, try that, do both, split the, the spark file down the middle, whatever, you know, all those things being available to you, again, make it much quicker and easier for you to get to the best end result with the best solution that suits the customer, for, again, for those metrics you're looking for. Always the last one, really, measure and repeat, you know, Measure everything you do, look at it. And again, with the reporting, the dashboard and the audit trail that we have for everything, it's all in there. Again, all those tools to have you to do that are built into the, the Webio solution. And they're all really key to making sure you get the best. You know, it's great. Yeah, well, look, we, we've just increased our, our our communications by 8%. Fantastic. But actually, if you measure and analyze that, next week you can make that 12. Next week you can make that 14. And yes, you will get to a peak. But if you don't do that, you don't get the best out of anything. So... Uh, as talking about it, probably the, the best thing now is to have a look at it. I've got a, a, a quick sort of couple of bots here I'm going to run. I'm going to switch to an agent and we'll send out an INE. We'll have a look at that, see how that comes back. And again, you'll see the sort of time saving when the agent's busy, when the agent isn't busy, or when the customer is doing it in their own time. Okay, so let's have a, a look at that in sort of 
reality of the Webio system and a message going over to a phone. The first thing I want to show you actually is how simple and quick a bot can be built. So very simply, just going to log into the Webio system and the Webio system now will basically just give me a quick review of what's going on. I've got a few campaigns running these for the demos this morning and, and, uh, and this afternoon. So I'm going to look at the bots and the bots I'm going to be running just very quickly so you can see them. Uh, not overly interesting by themselves, but again, gives you an idea of, of how simple it actually is to um, to build them and basically you know get something moving, get something up and running. Uh, and then how quickly again you can enhance that based on the learnings and analysis that you do. So I've got two here. First one I'm going to send out is called the Collections Engagement Bot. And by clicking on here, very simple. This is all being done over SMS. It's quick and easy to show you on my phone than using WhatsApp and whatever else. Um, so I'm just going to select that bot. This bot is really straightforward. It's only eight steps. Uh, the first step really is just going to be sending out I'm, I'm linking it over to a, a queue first so I can view it coming in. So I can QA what's going on if you've got a QA that needs to be doing that. Second step really is just basically sending out a, a message that's saying, you know, dear, whatever my name is, based on the data it holds, it's whoever it is from uh, the company. I noticed you missed your payment, et cetera, et cetera. And it's then looking for an intent coming back. And I'm going to do a change of circumstance here. I've got some fallbacks and non deliveries and abusives and whatever else. Pretty straightforward. Not going to guide this one too many. Just a quick demonstration, but you'll see what will happen is change of circumstance will come back in. Someone will say something that means that. So the intent means that something's gone wrong. I've lost my job or whatever. And it'll then simply step through to stage four. So this is using neural linguistics and then it'll hand over to step four. Step four will basically come back. So look, sorry to hear that, which is relevant to what they've just said. Um, you know, would you want to speak to an agent about that? Or would you like to run through the automated system? At this point, I'm probably going to go through the, I will go through the agent, in fact. Uh, so you can see how it can be handed off and handed back and, and, and whatever else. And, and we'll get an ID and V out there and so forth. Um, so let's, let's run through that very quickly uh, and have a look at that working. So all I want to do now is to send a message to my phone. There it is. It's just arrived. My network's a little bit slow there. We've got a great signal here most of the time. Um, so you can see a message has come through. Let's just click on that. And here we are, message from Webio. So again, that message has gone out. It's going to go out to a million people, personalize it as you wanted. So dear Graham, it's Julie from Webio. I noticed you missed your payment, blah, 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 blah. So I'm just going to type something back in there. You know, I have had my hours cut. So the intent being it's a change of, a change of circumstance, basically. So I'll send that over now. This again, this is live from my mobile phone through the network, so it sometimes takes a couple of seconds for the networks to push them through. So again, it's picked that up, and you see there, it's, it's getting Graham. Sorry to hear that. We're here to help you, and we'll do our best to work out a new plan that would suit your new situation. Would you prefer to hold for an agent or continue? Oh, I'm just going to say agent, please. Again, it's just looking at uh, natural language and really trying to match that to the intent that I'm looking for. And again, that's something that gets smarter and cleverer. We start off with libraries. It it's, doesn't get a lot long to start with even. So here we go. So it helps save time when you're transferred. We need to confirm we're speaking with the account holder. Please reply with your postcode and date of birth. So I'm just going to get my date of birth. I'm going to give my real one. I'm far too old for that. So 01 stroke 06 stroke 1995. And send that across. Very straightforward. At this point, not a single agent or human has touched this. This has been a pure conversation between a bot and the customer themselves. So what I'm going to do now is move across from the customer phone and come into where the agents will be sitting. The agents will be sitting in conversational queues and you'll see the agency is a full history of that conversation with time date stamps. And the agent can read exactly what's been going on which agents it's been sent to and picked up by. This is myself, Graham Bragg, again, a demo account. I'm the only agent working these queues. And the agent can take over that conversation. So the agent can now literally type in free flow or using what we call smart phrases. So as they start to type putting keywords, you'll try and guess the nearest statement to be sent out. You've probably seen that in some of the other demos that we've done. Again, it's just really just to save agent time again. A lot of things are repetitive. So here I'm just going to go very quickly. Uh, I need you to complete A and Y and E. Is that okay? So tidy my English up a little bit there, and I send that over. That'll go over. That'll be logged on here. 
uh, that's waiting for my network to pick it up currently there it is it's been click clicked up on the network so that should now be on my phone as well so I'll click back on my phone there we go i need you to complete an i and e is that okay i'll say yes that is fine and send that back and let's go back to the agent view so the agent will now have that pop back into their queue once they've responded this will go red as you see it's solid now because it's now waiting for an agent to do something and the agent now has these what we were calling botlets earlier on these little additional bots that are available to, to to do the individual things take a payment do an income and expenditure so now they need to send an income and expenditure form so let's just click on here these are all the bots that i as an agent have associated with me as, a, as an agent Let's have a look. I believe it's called INE form. There it is. Where we have INE form. It's only a quick demo form. But what will happen is that will now be sent over to the client and the client's phone will pick that up. So if I now just click on to the phone again, I'm now, the agent's now moved away, I'm going to continue on with other conversations. So if I just click on here, what will happen? That will now open up that form. This form is now linked completely to the conversation that's being held. It knows who the customer is already, although no personal information is being exchanged between the two so again i've got a few questions on here we're going to ask you a couple of questions uh continue how much money do you receive each month so a few simple questions let's just type in here 1500 pounds okay a couple of questions how many adults live off the incoming see so you have graphics here this could be a slider this could be a picture it could be whatever really uh, again making it friendly and easy for the customer and again they're off doing this in their own time it may be they need to you know, speak to a couple of people. Well, actually, do we have an income joint between us? What is this? What do we spend on bills? And it doesn't matter. The agent's off. They're carrying on doing the normal day job. That conversation is still open in the background. And as soon as they uh, respond back, as you'll see that, it will come back to the agent or the working agents now working that cure conversation to see what happened. So let's just click on a few more of these. Two, how many children live off, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how much do you pay monthly towards your mortgage and rent? Let's give some quick answers. 500. Let's get through this very quickly. Do you pay utility bills? I'll say no. These are logical forms. If you say yes, it'll ask you more questions. You say no, it'll jump through those questions because they're not relevant. How many vehicles do you have in the household? Um, we have two. Anything else you'd like to add to your front status? No. Then finally, all you need to do is to submit the form. And that's simply press and submit that's it so once that's been submitted we'll go back to the form here and you'll see that all of the questions and all of the answers have now appeared in the conversation uh, so the agent can see those as if he had asked them or she had asked them one at a time and got those answers which can then be extracted out in any format or, or used live on the system here to come up with a new plan and again depending on your processes very simple it may be now that the payment is uh, is agreed and a payment needs to be taken and again, that's just as simple. You will just click on the agent's available bots and select the payment bot that would do that job. And it's as simple as that. So I'll click pay now. I'll transfer it over to the bot here, you'll see. And it's just again a simple message at the beginning of that that's saying, you know, thank you. Um, and click on the payment link. Very quickly, we'll look at the bots again and show you how simple that was to do because we can link in with 120 different payment providers very very simply so pay now it's a very simple bot it's only a few steps again so all that's doing is saying as you saw there thank you uh, with a couple of steps to make your payment two is the important one two is basically where it's now a payment step which is a selection of a step again there's lots of different ones on there also the listening step we, we were looking at earlier on payment this one here and we're just integrating with your payment provider by selecting that as a drop down and then giving a description of what that payment should be called. That could be a name, account number, whatever, combination of things. What my company name is that it will be linked to. And again, which currency it's going to go through in pound sterling and euro, the two standard ones we have here. And is it successful? Is it not successful? If it's successful, do something. If it's not successful, do something else. Here, I'm just going to do other steps again. Thank you, your payment was successful. And the second one, sorry, your payment failed. And then again, it will hand it to a queue, to an agent, to then continue on the conversation again. It really is that simple. Okay, let's go back to the main slides. Okay, so hopefully 
that all made sense. Uh, and you can see the sort of things, and the, the massive savings and how easy, and actually how much better experience it is for the customers. Um, you know, a nice graphical form that's easy to fill out with options that, that suit me is it, so much quicker and easier. And what we find um, with these sort of things and with simple one click, click payments and so forth is that more people will complete them. And what you get is more what you're looking for. The data on the INE is better, it's more considered. You know, the payment is made. Uh, it's just a very simple process, less hurdles to go through, but again, in a very compliant way. So, Graham, I, I repeat myself uh, on that one many a time, and I sound sometimes like a broken record. Um, ease of use drives adoption. Don't be surprised if you make it really easy for your customers to engage with you, to have conversations. They will. It's as simple as that. No, it's very true. And, and your ease of use drives adoption. I have used that line myself a few times. And oh. I, I do find I, I do kick myself as well after I've done it, thinking, ah, <laughs> he's got another one in my head. <laughs> Probably should take that word out of that piece there. But yeah, <laughs> he's got that one in my head. So, OK. <laughs> uh, ben benefits. Let, let's just do a quick, quick wrap up here before we, before we close off. Um, they're pretty obvious. Uh, you'll probably have picked them all up already from the, the wording and the sentences and what I've already said. But it, the big thing here is it's about cutting down your agent handling time for your humans, you know, and we see very quickly an average of 40% of all agent time is saved and which can then be used for things that the agents are better at, things agents are good at. It's just a really good saving. Income expenditure alone here, you see 75% less agent time. It's one of the biggest ones, but it's also one of the ones that isn't used all the time. So again, that's where you reduce that back down to your, your 40%. But again, it's, it's a huge win for, for everybody. That's, that's an average we're seeing across the board with our clients. Um, Next one, smoother, faster customer experience. Again, the better the, the better. I'm not going to go back to Mark's line there, but you know, ease of use does drive adoption. I'm not going to use it ever again in my lifetime, but you know, that is that is so true, and I have to agree. It, it, it's it's obvious, but it, it's you know, it's not always what's obvious isn't always in front of your face to see and then do something about. Also, we find yeah, by, by having a smarter, more automated process, you've got a lot less clicks for people to go through. What was three clicks becomes one click. What was lots of questions and answers becomes one simple form. What was this was, you know, it's, it's much easier. So obviously, less clicks, you know, more guidance towards where you want them to go. You're going to get and you do get a higher completion rate. So again, you get to the end of the journey much quicker and more often. Last one. Um, quite important. Uh, your compliance team are always going to be over all of these things. You know, what's being said? How is it said? Customers now complain, said you've bugged them, said you've done this, said you asked them for that. You're going to get all of these things. So actually having this in a in an auditable compliance solution, which basically means everything that happens is date and timestamp. Exactly what was said, exactly what came back, whether it was a bot. If it gets handed from a bot to an agent, who was the agent that picked it up? Whose queue did it go into? How long was it sat in their queue? When they replied, what did they do with it? Did they change its status? Did they send the payment? What did they say? All of these things are audited and they're there and stored for you to use one to help with your training, two to go over any compliance issues and queries you may get from FCA, etc. So that's me wrapping up there. I'm just going to quickly hand over to Anne-Marie. I know we've got the next webinar coming up very soon. Anne-Marie? Yeah, we do. Thanks, um, Graeme. Yeah, just a reminder there, um, a lot of you have already registered for it, but for those of you who haven't, um, the last webinar in the series is coming up very shortly. The details are on the screen. It's all about machine learning. And um, so if you want to get on board, you will have received um, and register, you'll have received emails into your inbox. And as I said, a lot of you have already registered already. So we're going to quickly move on now to the final bit, which is um, the all important Q and A session. So we have had some questions that have been coming in. So I'm just going to jump right in and get started. Started. Um, this one, first question is from Sayir. Um, when automating, how complex can you go? Is there a limit to how long a conversation can go on for? I'll grab that one if that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, th there really isn't a limit when it comes physically and technically, um, but it becomes logically how far do you take it? This, again, this is coming down to having these, what I call botlets, these really tailored, very good at what they do type of bots that, that pass over to each other and hand over to each other. And you could have a continuous stream of them. Um, but again, it wouldn't be recommended. You know, it's about being sensible and just really controlling what 
you can control via a bot in a really good way. And I, I use this line quite a lot, and I know Mark probably uses it now as well, hopefully, after what I said earlier on. But, you know, it's about never regressing your customer journey. It's very easy to try and do too much automatically and taking your customer journey backwards. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a real fine mix, really, about doing enough, but not too much. Graham, just on that point, I, I and yes, I do um, uh, use that. Uh, but it, 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 they really say if you had somebody on the phone call and you could have the conversation within two to three minutes, um, would you want to have uh, an extended for 20 minutes when three minutes will do? So the same principles apply. Yes, you can have it hugely complicated, but actually the objective is what's the business need? Um, so that would be um, just sort of to add to what you, you've already said. Great, thanks, um, guys. On to the next one from Paul. You had just mentioned this at the end there, Graham, about compliance, but his question came in early about how do you address compliance with automation? Okay. Let me take that on, Marie. Yeah, go, um, go on, the, sorry, yeah, um, and really the, um, the question is obviously around compliance, and invariably what we say is how do you do it today? So this is just another channel. So think of what you do on the phone. You're going to ask questions around uh, date of birth, postcode, number of the house, what's your account number. All of those things can be done exactly the same way. The only difference, as we've mentioned already, they can be automated with very um, uh, little heavy lifting done from the point of view of what we see. So um, all of the things that you do today, so you're, we're not looking for people to change any of the processes. Use what you do today. It just so happens it's just going to be in um, one of a, a digital channel and uh, more times than not, it's going to be easy to automate. So um, you don't do anything different than you would currently do today. That's interesting. Okay. That, that comes up. So that comes up quite a lot in, in meetings, actually, where well, somebody will say, yeah, but we, we, we've got to be compliant. And that, that causes problems. And you say, to them, well, how do you do that on the telephone calls today? And they go, oh, yeah, it is exactly the same thing. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. Good question. OK, on to the next one from Ryan. Um, what uptake have you seen in customers paying using links and messages? Uh, it's it's reasonable. Uh, it varies hugely again depending on you know, at what point you're sending them out, uh, where they are in the cycle, etc., etc., etc. As an overall, I would probably say you're looking around about 12 to 14 percent increase in people clicking through to the payment uh, once you've added in an automatic payment process. Again, it's about getting in the right place at the right time. That will drop very low, obviously, if it's really late debt, uh, late debt stage, and as probably other things you need to do before you get to that stage so again it will vary hugely as a general rule though i'd say if you can get sort of 10 to 14 percent um increase you're probably about you know the on the average and in reasonably good shape okay great and um, the next one here then is um from david how do you balance between automation and keeping agents involved and have you seen agents being reassigned as automation is doing most of the work yeah, a uh, very um, pertinent question because actually um, the whole objective here is to, yes, you want to automate as much as you can, um, but the one thing, and Graham mentioned it earlier, the customer journey and the customer experience, it has to be good and as good as it is today. Um, so um, there's lots of, and we mentioned earlier, structured parts to a conversation and then there's unstructured. So. Uh, automation works exceptionally well in some areas and then other times it is absolutely the right thing to get the agent involved. So um, you're not looking uh, most times to try to automate everything because fully automating collections conversations, I would suggest to you is some way off, um, but it would be a case of where that, that free time that you um, free up from what the agents are doing today, that is the ideal opportunity where, uh, and we see it every day of the week, that um, agents are now being uh, reassigned to work on higher value conversations that quite frankly, um, just don't get focused on today because of the, let's say, the the, the focus on the, um, the ID and Vs and that type of stuff, because that's just what they have to do today. So, 
um, it really is driven by the business, how much is automated, how much is done by the agent. More and more we see people moving down the automation road um, and it is freeing up a lot of resource to be able to add real value to the business. So, um, uh, you know, that, the, that will grow and grow. And, and also it is driven by, a lot of the time, by confidence within the business that, um, and quite rightly, people, don't want their brand um, um, or the customer experience to be a bad one. And, um, you know, much that the technology can do it, sometimes it's that journey of confidence um, within a business to say, this is really good. Oh my God, this, we can do all, all, all these things. So uh, it's as much um, as confidence from the customer, as much as the technology. Indeed, I think the line I hear the most on that one, Mark, is after we've sort of been running for two or three months and we all sit around a table, that the people say, we can do more with the same. That's the line I hear a lot. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Absolutely agree. Great, thank you. Um, so on to the next one, question from Larry. Are there certain processes that you wouldn't recommend automating? Uh, yes, there are. Um, it's, again, would, would vary depending on which sort of vertical you're in, horizontal you're in and so forth. But there are definitely some conversations. You know, when you talk about vulnerabilities, um, sometimes a bot is the worst thing you can do. Sometimes it's the best thing you can do, depending on the vulnerability and the person. So you've got to pick those things up very quickly. Um, again, complaints. Complaints are a really bad one for, for bots. You know, people gen tend to want the human touch on a complaint. Um, you know, it's, it's not like going, you know, I've got to the Facebook wall because I couldn't get hold of anybody and I posted how bad you are. You know, that, that's the way people's minds work. They want to shout and rant and to do that with a human is, is, is the way to get to the end of it than it is through a bot where it's just going to confuse them more. So there are a number of different things out there, but the answer to the question is yes, there definitely are. And we would very quickly highlight those for you once we go through your, your sort of the, the areas that you'd be looking to, to automate. Okay, we've just time for one more. It's the final question um, from Frank. Do you recommend automation for late stage collections? Yeah, thanks for um, the question, Frank. Uh, yes, we do. Um, and I would come back to um, the uh, comments that uh, and the, the, the information that Graham shared with us earlier. Like um, at any stage of a conversation, stuff like identification and verification is going to be needed. There is still common things that can be done. Definitely when it gets maybe to be a quite a complex conversation, um, that may be where um, the handover is more appropriate to a uh, to an agent. One of the key things, and, and actually for late stage debt, um, I, I would suggest, yeah, yeah automation is brilliant um, and it's possible. Um, the one area that we would say that is going to have a bigger even impact, and we covered it on, uh, I think it was the first in the series of the, um, the, the webinars that we're doing around this, was the channels, making sure that you're engaging with customers in channels that they use. The likes of having SMS conversations, conversations over WhatsApp, Messenger, and um, being able to open up those channels to allow people to engage with you, um, especially important around late stage debt where any money collected um, sometimes is gold dust because you know you are um, uh, writing that down uh, probably aggressively as it gets uh, aged debt. So um, absolutely it's possible. I would say in tandem with using the different channels will be the most effective way. Okay, Graeme and Mark, thank you very much for that. Um, we have now come to the end of today's session um, and I hope you found it informative. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on info at webio.com or you can mail Mark directly there on mark.opperman at webio.com. As I said earlier on, we do get a lot of questions that come afterwards. So if you think of something, please don't um, hesitate uh, to ask. So um, again, just a reminder of our next session that's coming up and um, keep an eye on your inbox. Um, and also all that's left for me to do now today is to thank you for joining us and have a great day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.